Hello Retro Friends! Since the most recent updates for the C64 Mini, the question has been raised whether they have improved something on the frame lag or on the, on the input lag at all. So I was um, spending some time thinking about how to test this, especially in uh, comparison to the original um, C64 Mini. and. Um, since I haven't found a way to downgrade the firmware, perhaps just renaming it could work. I haven't tested this yet, but uh, since I have some, some other plans as well, I got another one. So I got one original uh, C64 Mini and one with the most recent update on it. And um, the thing is that um, testing so-called input lag, it's a little bit tricky because you can't really judge when you have pressed the button and when the, the signal was initiated, so to say. And uh, I came up with the idea that uh, I kind of disassembled the original joystick and added an LED to it. And um, this LED is uh, usually on when, when no button is pressed. And uh, we may just uh, simulate this, no problem. There we go. And as soon as I press the fire button, the LED goes off. And therefore I have really an uh, one-to-one -one indicator whether I have pressed the button or not. So in the original design, the Mini comes with a joystick that um, is, well, a little bit um, cheap, so to say. And uh, if you press buttons or if you move the stick, there's a lot of uh, way without action, without activity on the electrical side, so to say. And therefore you got the impression that it takes ages until something happens on the screen. And just to avoid this and to have really an indicator whether I have pressed the button or not, I kind of modded this um, joystick and um, I was using this against the screen to capture the input lag. And for this I used my old uh, Hero 3 set to 100Hz recording, 100FPS recording, just to have some better discrimination between the frames and to see whether something really happens on the screen. And then I went to um, a setup like this. So. This is what I've used to check a normal C64 board uh, connected to FrameMeister. So you can see the uh, Hero 3 on this uh, tripod in, in the foreground. And um, I used this um, Pi 1541 and an SD to IC device against the screen to see whether something happens on the screen and on the LED. You will see this later on in the video how it looks like. But uh, now perhaps let's start with the Mini and with the most recent firmware. And um, as you can see, I'm holding this uh, modified joystick board against the screen. And as soon as I press a button, the LED goes off. And then we will see a frame count in the upper left hand corner. And we can see how much frames it takes until the signal is processed and until we see and response on the screen. So the first frame has been uh, the LED is still on and the last frame is the fire button has been fully pressed and there's another run just to have some uh, statistical significant samples here. And it's almost the same. It's about uh, 15 to 16 frames at 100 Hz, 100 FPS recorded, so we have to divide this by two. So it's about eight frames um, lag. And uh, considering that uh, we are talking about uh, 15 uh, frames per second, eight frames, it's, um, it's, really, it's really huge, it's a lot. So I think for most of the games like jump and runs and all that stuff, you can learn to adapt to this because uh, I mean it's it's kind of predictive. If you have to jump, you jump a little bit early or something like this. But if you talk about shooter games where something fires at you and this isn't predictive, then it, it, it really it's a long time waiting eight frames until you can uh, maybe 
uh, dodge the shoot the shot or uh, do something like this so and um so i was kind of disappointed to see this and i thought well perhaps the original version was even worse and uh, so i went on and tested the original and uh, this, the test is the very same we can see the button goes off and the frame count starts and as we can see it's the very same there is no difference i did this about 10 times or something like this and uh, i thought i'm kind of crazy because my personal impression was that the c64 mini has been improved in terms of frame lag input lag and um well, by I have to say, there is really no difference between the original firmware and the most recent firmware. So, and then I thought, okay, let's have a test, because what we have to keep in mind, the C64 Mini is connected by HDMI to a um, screen a monitor, and I'm using the Acer Predator gaming monitor, which is considerably fast, but it's not the fastest panel on the market. And I thought, well, how can I check what's going to be the influence of the monitor? And um, so I, I did some research on the internet and there are some values uh, shown at Tom's Hardware, for example. And they, they show very low um, response times, about 60 to 80 milliseconds, which is something about 1 to two frames or uh, frames or something like this in terms of 50 frames per second so that's that's really quite low and i thought okay let's check a normal c64 board connected to a frame meister an hdmi upscaler connected to this gamer uh, screen which is the very same i'm using for the c64 uh, c64 mini as well and let's have a check how this is going to perform and uh, this is what we're going to see here so this is a test especially made for uh, checking the video lag and uh, the test is using the LED of the floppy drive and um, this goes off immediately as soon as the program says go off and then it takes quite a while until the screen uh, gets updated and uh, I can have another one I did this with the Pi 1541 and I did this with an SD to IC device and uh, we may repeat this for <laughs> comparison reasons so that's again the test with the Pi 1541 the LED goes off and it takes about well 6 frames maximum until the screen shows a difference and um, I thought perhaps that's an that's an issue with um, the Pi 1541 perhaps it's a little bit uh, slow or something like this and therefore I performed the test with the SD to IC device as well but the result is the very same so we can see the LED goes off and then it's less than six frames uh, until the screen border changes the color and we have to keep in mind we're still talking about a 100 fps video i have recorded and uh, therefore we really have to divide the numbers in two uh, by two so we talk about three maximum four frames uh, input lag on a normal c64 connected to a frame meister and um, this is an impressively low number i haven't expected a, a number like this and um, well then I thought okay if we just take this as, um, as, as, as given for example and say okay maybe the display adds a frame lag of about one frame or something like this even if we go by this the, the, the mini is lagging behind at least five to six frames and uh, this, is, this is really an impressive number in terms of gaming and uh, so I thought okay on the C64 Mini, um, rumors are saying WISE 2.4 is used as an emulation. And I got this on my PC and I thought, okay, let's give it a test whether WISE on a PC connected to the very same display by uh, DisplayPort 
is showing similar numbers and uh, so I did the same test and here we can see that's the Y is what we can see and uh, I used the sa very same joystick and uh, it is slightly faster as we can see and I did this twice so it's about 12, 11 to 12 frames recorded at 100 fps so we have to divide this by 2 and so we come up with about uh, 5 to 6 frames what WISE 2.4 is showing as an input lag so the common thing used on the C64 Mini and WISE is the joystick and I can actually not say um, whether the joystick is adding an additional input lag I mean it's a USB device that tries to convert an electrical signal to an USB signal transfer this to the PC or to the C64 Mini and then uh, the USB is kind of interpreted on, on this as well and uh, this this all takes time it needs to be processed and all that stuff and um, I was looking whether I can find a different uh, joystick or a different gamepad which I can mod in the very same way but unfortunately this wasn't working the one I found wasn't really uh, well, very <laughs> very cooperative so to say and I have to find a way how to eliminate the input lag caused by the joystick but nevertheless if you get the C64 Mini as a whole package including the joystick then uh, you will use this probably in this way and therefore it is really interesting to say if the whole combo is having a certain frame lag or not and um, perhaps there is a joystick out, out there on the market that's supported by the C64 Mini and that works much better than the original joystick I mean there's mechanical wise a lot to improve and perhaps the USB part can be fast as well but um, the things I got on hand aren't working on the C64 Mini or I couldn't mod them in a way that I add an LED or something like this so as a final conclusion we may have uh, an overview so we can see the C64 Mini regardless of the firmware has about the same frame lag um, and uh, therefore there hasn't been any improvement at all so the impression I've got during the tests of the C64 Mini were pure subjective and the data is speaking a different language so I have to kind of admit that uh, I was wrong saying it felt better so and uh, as a additional information we can see a normal C64 connected to a frame meister which is an HDMI upscaler which takes times as well um, takes about three frames of input lag and compared to WISE on a Windows machine connected to the very same display is about eight, six frames so in, if you compare this to a normal C64 connected to an original uh, CRT monitor for example there will be no frame lag at all no input lag and uh, if you are a hardcore gamer or die hard gamer and you're looking for action games like um, all the shooters out there and all that stuff then I think going this path is probably not the best idea but if you are a casual gamer a gamer who is just using games for entertainment and who's playing jump and runs and all that stuff I think the C64 Mini is still an impressive device and um, recently it was available here in Germany for 35 euros and that's about the same price you have to spend for a Raspberry Pi and uh, if you consider using a Raspberry Pi with RetroPie for example as an emulator uh, then you still need a joystick, you still need the case and all that stuff and you still have to work around all until all that stuff is working so for a price between 35 and 50 euros or something like this a C64 Mini is still an impressive package and uh, can be used right now on, on your TV set, on your monitor, on your projector 
and uh, it's it's really an interesting device and seeing all those frequent updates in the last time I think there is perhaps a chance that we may see some improvements on the input lag as well but on the other side uh, USB support uh, which has been added just recently is really a major step forward and therefore I'm, I'm still happy about this device it's really fun to work with and uh, well but there is still some work to do anyway that's all I have to say for today thank you very much for watching if you have any questions comments suggestions how I can test this um, input lag in a different way if you have any recommendations for a better joystick or better gamepad that works in conjunction with the C64 Mini feel free to use the comment section I highly appreciate this and if you haven't done so and want to stay informed as usual feel free to subscribe and um, thank you very much for watching see you for the next episode bye bye